hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and here i am with another video so today we will be discussing one of the very important topic which is state and props and state and props is the kind of thing you will be using most of it like every component you will be using state and props okay and i will explain you today how the state and props we will use and when we will use okay and what is these uh, state and props okay so let's move forward so state is something I, I wanted to explain you using one of the image okay so that uh, it will be easy and you will remember for the longer time okay so this image will explain you what is state and props okay and how the data will flow how the event will flow and everything so what you notice at the first we have couple of components here okay just don't see anything else we have one component which is parent and that has two different uh, child component and one child component further have two more child component okay so that is how uh, we have this structure and or the flow of this particular component so now uh, what is state so state is an object okay which contain the data okay and this data will remain with that component so now if you want to use that data further in your child component so there is something called props which help you to pass the data from the parent component to the child component okay so what you notice here we have this state and which relate to this component and now these props are passing through if you notice my arrow these props are passing through to the child component okay then child component can have their own state that's okay right and then again this uh, this parent component can use the same props or the different props in another child component and then this component can have further state or it can also pass this up like coming props from the parent further to the down uh, child components okay so this is the flow you i think you understood the flow now so states only belongs to the components if you want to use in child component you have to use props in order to pass that data further to the child component now left side you see data arrow right side you see event arrow so what does that mean so basically if you wanted to flow your data okay so when you flow your data it will always flow from parent to the child so this is the rule so you cannot flow the data from child to the parent there is a way i will tell you but not directly so you can always flow your data from parent to the child you have to remember that part now another thing is event so when you trigger the event and you want to update your parent data from the child data that's what i was saying i will tell you about this so now this event you can trigger by just let's say you are passing one event from your um event handler from your uh, parent component to the child component so by triggering that particular event from the child component you can update the parent component state okay so that means this particular arrow will talk about you can flow the event from child to the parent component okay so that means your last child component can trigger the event which you have written on the very very top level parent component okay that is possible so that is what this arrow talk about so for now i think you understood how this state is and what is this props so props is just to pass the data state contain the particular component data so now if you are clear till this place meanwhile if you like this video please like the video and share with your friends also subscribe to the channel so that you will not miss any kind of video which is upcoming in future so i'll talk about all of that and uh, i'll explain you everything in my examples okay so let's move to the example so as in order to use the state in react native component you have to start defining this const and we have an array and then we have one hook provided by react which is use state okay this particular hook will help us to create that object or the array or the uh, particular string so any kind of data type you can pass here like you can pass numbers you can pass array you can pass object or you can pass any kind of boolean so different data types it accept so that means you are clear uh, in this particular it look like a function if you notice like it's a use state function and it accepts some parameter so let's say uh, what is this particular parameter it is basically an initial state let's say you wanted to set some initial state uh, you want to set this like a name okay uh, right so you can set a age so any kind of initial state you will be setting here right so you can set this and now this array which you see right so if i increase the font you notice this array 
this array contain two things the first thing is the name of this state like how will you use this particular thing in your component okay so let's say i will give this user data okay and second parameter will help us to update this particular state okay so that means we have to say set right and then you can say user as we are using camel casing we have to just say a uh, user u caps okay otherwise you can also use like this it is okay okay user data so first thing will help you to use this data so how will you use you will say user dot user data dot name user data dot dot age basically this object will be provided to you and this particular method will help you to update this so basically if i uh, just console this okay user data so what do you see here so you notice one thing in the console we have this particular object coming in okay so now that means we can use this like dot name okay and we can say dot age you are clear so if you understand object so this is the way you can access so you see we have this name and the age coming in so that means you can display also so let me define uh, one view and will help you to show that first okay text and then you can start defining this like uh, name colon and then you know how to render particular thing in your uh, react native component so or react component right so any anything any value you can render using these curly braces so let's say we have this name we can just copy this piece and we can put here and then i'll just keep this style so that your text will look little bigger okay so you see your name and the name value is started coming similarly you can use your age okay you can just say age and you notice you notice the age is also started coming now the point comes in if you wanted to update the particular state okay so to update this particular state push or basically you can directly push some data here because our data type is object right we have to pass some object or we can use this object and basically we can concatenate concatenate the new object so guys in order to update this particular state right so we have this method which is set user data which is available so now if you pass the data which can be object because we are passing the initial state as object so we have to pass the another uh, data to this as an object only okay but in order to execute this method we need any kind of event okay so what can we do here so either we can create a button or we can use use effect so as we don't have use effect right now uh, or we have not learned it in this particular uh, series right now so i'll not tell you because you might get confused so let let us create some kind of button okay and uh, we just need to pass some title here so i hope you have already learned about button in uh, built in component okay uh, click to update user data okay you have this button okay it don't have the button kind of feel but yeah it is a button and in react native we have event called on press okay so on press will have the event name so let's say we'll say uh, handle handle update okay so and this particular event we will create here const so in this handle update what we will do whenever somebody press so we will trigger this event so in this event we will just quickly put this set user data so we can pass the object which can be our updated object okay so let's put that so let me put the uh, let me change the name and age so now this particular event will trigger once you click on this button on the mobile so once we i click on this what you notice immediately your data updated right so how that happened that happened because of state so state will keep watch of that initial state data and it detect if there is a change if there is a change it will automatically update your view so basically this view part so that means we have a kind of uh, object which is always live that means anytime you change anything there it will automatically update your uh, view so 
so if you go to any kind of uh, online shopping app so you notice if you add to cart any kind of product so automatically you see uh, numbers will start appearing in the cart okay so you see one two three or how many items you have added so similarly that happens just because of this kind of state variable so where <clears throat> you update it will automatically go there and update the values hope you are clear with the state concept now how we can create one more thing i'll tell you you can create n number of state okay so you can create one more state called count and you can just give a set count okay you can just say user state and you can just say let's say it is a starting from one and this count you can display <laughs> just after this button or you can take one more view view and this has the okay so n number of state you can use you can see this count so you can define the style okay so we have count one so now if you if you update here count three it will automatically update here so what you notice um, we can use multiple states so now uh, next thing we talk about this prop which is like passing from one component to the another component okay so this is also very important i told you because every time you are working with a bigger application you have multiple parent component child component that child component can have one more child component so it can be a chain of lot of components and you might need to pass some data from parent component to the child component right or you need to update some data from child component to the parent component so we'll talk about that now so let's say this data right which you have this count count data here so this particular value which is like count you might need to pass to further component let's say there is a cart component okay so we'll create a component called cart okay so export default cart cart <clears throat> okay and this will return a view okay and we can say here okay and uh, what i will do i will just quickly import my styles so that my text look a little bigger so i'll just say style okay so this particular uh, basic component is ready now what i will do i will just quickly import that here okay so i'll say cart okay so you have the error called view doesn't exit that means we have to just import all of these okay yeah so as we are not using anything so we can remove from the okay so you should also understand what kind of error you are getting and how to resolve them okay so that will come with time for sure so you see this cart is there but we don't have any kind of uh, count coming in here so let's remove this particular piece so what you see this cart is empty okay but we need to pass this count here so now in order to pass the count that means we are passing the prop so you can define a prop and kind of attribute how you are passing this so this is also a prop only so just everything is prop okay because this is a component already created which you are using so which accept some kind of uh, prop called style which accept the object so similarly here you can pass your own custom attributes or custom props so you name anything okay you can say count you can say cart count okay that doesn't matter but what matters is the data you passing here okay so count is the state we have created here right which has this number okay now as we are passing this prop so we need to passing props means passing a parameterized value in your functions right similarly in javascript so if you pass something you have to accept that something here so so as it will come as an object you have to destructure so you can directly destructure here okay so otherwise you can just write like that props and then you can destructure inside your component by saying uh, this one props okay either way is fine i would like to have this uh, very very optimized approach okay so i'll just quickly keep my props here directly so you you understand what is coming what is not you will save just one line okay so now we have this cart count cart count coming in so 
what you can do you can directly render that and you notice it is started appearing here now if you even keep the button here okay let me keep the button here button and uh, i'll just say title okay title and i'll say uh, update part count okay and on press we have to anyway give and handle update count either we can do this because it's a very small minor update i would like to keep my arrow function here so then you will also know like if quickly you wanted to uh, put something here you can also do that so uh, now we have another uh, what you say method which is set count to update this uh, particular count okay so we can directly put here and we can just say count plus one okay so by default we kept uh, three we can keep zero because your card will be always empty right so we have card zero and when we have this update count thing we can keep it here also so let's say you have a product where you have just add this item so update the count so when you click so what do you notice you notice this is the parent component this app js is your parent component and you have one child component called cart so if you update anything in your parent component just see here if you update anything in your parent component your child component data will update right because you are passing this count here this passing cart count cart count okay i'm sorry cart count cart count cart count okay so you're passing the cart count down to your child component okay so now child component are receiving it and showing it so that means anytime you click on this button it will keep update your data so now what kind of data you can update to your or what kind of data you can pass to your props any kind of data you can pass you can pass event also so what does that mean so this handle update okay so handle update can be triggered from here okay so and this data which you notice here right which you notice this data right now i click on this it will update from the parent component that means this button is already here so now what i will do i can pass this event also so i can say handle update user or i just say uh, user update event so you give your name properly so that someone will understand so this handle update you pass here so that you can receive it here now you can create one button okay i'll create this button here similar button i'll say this one and i'll just say uh, update the user data i'll this is just name from child okay so <clears throat> what happens this button is not there so i'll just quickly import this handle press okay this is not there that means we have to replace with the upcoming or basically coming from this thing right so what you notice this text becomes so big so it looks little weird update user data this that so a lot of mess is coming happening so i'll do one thing i'll keep this here okay update card count and the, we have update user data from child component okay so now what is happening on press i will be triggering this and it will go back so basically event go from down to the top so from here to the here so now what will happen if i click on this you notice this data updated that means we are passing the or we are triggering the event from the child component and this will update your parent data and that's how you will update your values on your view right so now you understood the flow of data which is from child to the parent parent to the child so i think after this video you will not have doubt about how data will flow from parent to the child child to the parent or how you can use the event to do that all of these things we have covered in this video and uh, hope this video will find you very informative okay so see you in next video guys so till then keep coding keep shining keep writing the code bye bye take care